So here we see the Starbucks booth in the local grocery store. We've got Starbucks everywhere these days. And that's what destroyed their condenser coil right there. That and someone pushing it. Well, I would rather not work on the sales floor. I don't like people gandering upon me. So I figured I'd go to the back of the store for all the tools and equipment I have to use. Looks like a good spot. And so here I got the unit up and elevated as best as I can get it so I don't got to bend over so much. And my basket load of tools, which is dry nitrogen, nitrogen regulator, digital gauges, torches, R290 and adapter, quarter inch access valve, vacuum pump, and hand tools. You'll see these little red sleeves from the factory on R290 units. They should slide off. Now I think the best place to access the circuits are on these little stubs where those red sleeves came off. So I take them off and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna swedge myself a little coupling onto the end of these access valves, pigtails, whatever you want to call them. I always like my pipes to be clean before I cut. And you know, I try not to put too much pressure with my with my spinning blade on there and I like to spin it a lot more than probably what most people do. Pull out my little valve stems, get them both ready. And I wanna, before I do anything, I wanna flow a little bit of nitrogen in to one side so that I don't take any chances of any R290 catching fire because I don't like explosions. So I'm just running a little bit into what is the suction side on my blue hose and this will make me feel a little better about igniting my torch and soldering or brazing that access valve so just a little nitrogen and let it bleed out I learned that it's recommended by torch manufacturers to disassemble everything for transit so I started doing that and it's not been too inconvenient so here's my little cap tube connector straight out to the liquid line I'm just gonna stretch it out a little so it's easier to unsweat. Looks like this dryer is made specifically for that. Now I'm ready to seal up my pigtails or access valves, which I'll only use to flow nitrogen, evacuate it, and charge up. At the end, I'll pinch off lines and seal the stubs the way they were. Ugly, but it'll work. This is the hole that my needle valve, or BPV31, that I used on the first trip created. Just a dab of solder on it. And I want to maximize time if I can, so I'll be cooling everything back down with a wet rag. Now I'll flow more nitrogen so I can go deeper into the system. But since I got giant holes in the condenser, I can only do so much and get nitrogen only partially in. I decided to unsweat the condenser instead of cutting it out so that everything should fit right back together like it originally was. The outlet of the condenser goes directly into the dryer. And then the cap tube comes directly out of the dryer. I guess having regulations in place that do not allow for R290 systems to be bigger than about five ounces means there can be no extra internal volume. So they make them as small as possible. Now it's ready to come out. They got about eight screws that hold everything together with the condenser fan assembly being the bottom support for the coil. Here's the two side by side, and then I left one side of the bottom support screwed in place, which makes it a little easier for me mounting it. Unsweat the liquid line stub out now to use on the new dryer. 
I ended up accidentally closing up the cap tube when I was unswinging it. So being such a small amount, I decided to cut that plugged end out. The way I do this is I carefully scar a tiny bit around where I want to cut it. And instead of cutting it, I snap it off with two pliers. I carefully grab the one side with the channel locks, flush with the circle I cut around the tube, and with the needle nose, I snap it off, just like that. Works quite well for me. Looks like this after. Now that I'm ready to start soldering, I get everything put together. Carefully insert my cap tube about an inch into the dryer. And I even wrap the dryer to keep it from overheating too much. I run a small amount of nitrogen flow through it as I do the soldering and begin on the condenser coil discharge inlet. Next on to the dryer outlet and cap tube joint. Just a small dab and not to heat it enough to allow the cap tube to absorb the filler and ultimately become plugged with solder. If you push the tube in deep enough and use just a dab of solder on it, you should be good. Still flowing a small bit of nitrogen. Now I prepare the dryer inlet and small section of liquid line. Keep the dryer cooled a little bit. Okay, that should have it. Let's see if we can get this thing to, to pressurize. And hold some pressure. Two hundred and twenty psi low side, so I shouldn't go more than two hundred and twenty. By closing all the manifold valves, I can verify that I did not plug the cap tube with the solder since pressure from the high side equalizes with the low side. And I'll take it up to 195 for the pressure test. You gotta take into consideration that this is such a small system that if there is a smallest little leak, it would definitely show a big loss. All right, we're gonna let it hold on its tightness test and we're gonna get vacuum pump and vacuum pump. I think we're good. I believe it's stabilized. It's been going 12 and a half minutes and it's been sitting here pretty much the last five minutes it hasn't moved that's what I call a tightness test time for a vacuum so I'll bleed the nitrogen out grab my vacuum pump open everything up so it all bleeds out quicker and then close them all back down connect my vacuum hose 3 8 hose to my pump start it up and watch what it does I'm not sure exactly why doing this is important, but I did learn a while back that doing this is important. You gotta bleed out a little bit of 
vapor out of this. I think it's called a ballast. Don't ask me why. You bleed a little bit out and then you close it back up. Micron testing is tricky because this should pull down really quickly. Like watch. My pump is capable. You see? My pump's capable. Pull down to pretty freaking low. As soon as I open it up to the system, it changes. It seems to change. Like this is the first time I've seen it down that low since I connected to it. But I was able to get it down to about 340 microns and that's about as good as it's going to get. Based on the tightness test and this vacuum, I think it's good. So I got my R290 ready to go. I flip it upside down for now. So I can purge the charging hose. And I even purge out my liquid line hose before I start dumping it into the system. So at this point I've got my liquid line valve on my manifold closed and I've got the little ball valve on my red liquid line closed. So when I open it, I'm only releasing what's in the hose, the liquid in the hose into the system. So I locate R290 on my manifold gauges as it equalizes. And honestly, I don't have a good method for weighing in such a small amount of refrigerant under five ounces. I try to use my scale before and I find that the weight of my hoses and even just small movements greatly affect the scale and the measurements. So I'm just gonna get some pressure in it and start it up. I'm gonna monitor my liquid line temperature see how it's saturating I'm gonna monitor how well the box cools and I'm gonna to try to get it right in that little sweet spot um, and not overcharge it but not undercharge it and I'm sure many of you have have come across this what I just described what are some of the methods that y'all use to weigh in such small critical charges let me know in the comments Working with such a small amount, two and a half ounces is the refrigerant charge. That's like the amount of refrigerant that fits in my hose. All right, so I got the top one measuring inside temperature. Need to add more because I'm suction sides down in the negatives. pretty close to where we need to be. Cooler's dropping temp good. It's about to cycle off. Need to open it.
I think I'm gonna be good with it right around here. Let me know what y'all think about where I put it. All right, so it has shut off. It works. I think I'm gonna leave it right there. So let's seal it back up. So if you look carefully, this is a pinch off tool. In the middle, it makes a perfect flat pinch. So I'm gonna use that to pinch this off and seal it up the way the factory had it. So I make one pinch and then I decide to make a second pinch about a quarter inch away on the liquid line. Then I take my hose off and cut it with tubing cutters. Pinch it off with the channel locks. Put a little rag on it and then seal it up with the torches. Seals it shut. Slide my little red sleeve back on there. Do the same on the suction line. And I got a big old glob on there, and that was by accident, but it's close to my pinch off tool, so I'm just gonna leave it. And unfortunately, I can't slide my red sleeve on there too far, but oh well. She'll do. And the last thing I did was I mounted this little piece of, uh, of Unistrut down the bottom to keep them from pushing it too far back in and hopefully save that coil from blowing again next time. And that's it you guys. Thanks for watching.